we will talk about some basic topics and if you have questions you can type or you can just raise your hand end of the seminar I'm gonna give you the permission so you will be able also to ask on the other hand you can also uh, write your question to the chat port I'm gonna answer all the question end of the last 30 minutes okay so our first topic will be about uh, what is Erasmus exactly. Let's make it sure and make it clear what is Erasmus and what is Erasmus Plus. So as you know, the Erasmus Plus is the name of the program, the general name of the program, which is called between 2014 and 2021. So after this 2021, the name probably will be changed or it will be stayed because a uh, European Commission didn't decide a new name yet. So uh, we'll call so far as Erasmus Plus. Under the Erasmus Plus, we will talk about the higher education students projects, which first one, studies mobility. So what is studies mobility? Studies mobility, which is kind of project type for higher education that held in, in another country with partner program universities. So, as you know, the duration and application duration is still valid and students are able to apply for studies mobility. And it will continue until the 26th of February. So you are still have time if you couldn't manage to gather your documents such as transcript or other documents so you will be able to have time and complete all the required documents and then you will be able also to upload to the system and you will be able to complete your application until the 26th of the February. So uh, firstly, I'm going to show you how to apply because I will receive many questions types how we will apply to the Erasmus Plus mobilities and how we will apply Erasmus traineeship mobilities. There are kind of questions I receive mostly. So firstly, I'm gonna share with you today how you will apply to the Erasmus Plus mobility, which is the current one, it's open. And I'm gonna share my screen with you. Just uh, let me... All right. I hope you can see my screen right now. So I'm gonna explain how you apply easily to the Erasmus Plus mobility. So as you know, this is the our website or the for Erasmus Plus program, which is Erasmus Office website as well. On the right side, you will see Erasmus application announcement. So in the announcement, as you have seen, I have written all the description, which is in two language, English. And when you, when you roll down the page, you will be able to see also the English version of the announcement. So this is basically when you click the apply online button, you will reach to the Erasmus port system. So let's change the language of the Erasmus port, make it English so it will be easier for you. So it's written, I am a student of Istanbul Commerce University or Istanbul Tijarit University. When you click it, if you haven't created a member before, you have to create an account. Firstly, you have to create an account, but if you have already created an account, you will click the login and it leads you to the home page on the login page of the Erasmus Plus. So I'm gonna add with as, as a student. You will 
will use your email which is created by university. Istanbul .tr. So I think everyone can see my screen right now on the Erasmus board, which you have seen, this is the your account. When you log into the Erasmus board system, you will be able to see this homepage firstly. Before applying, you have to update your informations over here. In your avatar, you can upload a picture and you can update your birthday. Let's do it together. So as a first step, we will apply today together just like a student okay so i'm gonna choose like let's say okay and phone number you can also write your phone number and then you save it after you save it, your personal information, you will come to the My Applications. Here is My Applications tab on the left side. Also, uh, I think someone wrote something. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, when you click to the My Application, you will see EUC slash key action 103 and then my studies application. When you click my studies application, you will be able to see the term which is open for Erasmus outgoing. When you click the apply and the application form will be open. Firstly, you have to write your student number. Let's say 2000 blah blah. And your degree. By the way, let's make it clear here for master and for bachelor students so for bachelor students you have to type or you have to click how many years you have studied during the, your process in istanbul commerce university if you have studied one year you will click one year okay so let's choose if you are match let's assume that you are a bachelor degree and you will choose your faculty, let's say faculty of business and department. Let's choose the business administration. And here, as I said, depends on how many years you studied. For master degree student, you have to calculate your term, how many term you studied. If you have studied one term, you will click one term. If you have studied two, you have to click two cl second class. But for bachelor degree students, if you have completed like one year, you will click one year. If you have completed two years or three years, you will choose two or three years. Let's imagine you have completed three years in Istanbul Commerce University. Let's choose the second class that you are in right now. And then your transcript degree. Let's assume your transcript degree is 3.50. It's quite high for some students, I think. Yeah. So let's make it clear one more point here. For bachelor degree students, your transcript degree, I mean general degree, must be 2.20 and above. If you are not 2.20 and above, you are not able to apply to the Erasmus. For master students, this grade, it must be 2.50. If you are not about 2.50, you are not able to apply for Erasmus Studies Mobility. This is also valid for PhD student as well. It must be also for PhD students 2.50. Okay, let's click the continue. And roll down, you will choose your personal information again. You will update your personal information here. 
nationality, let's say Turkey and nationality number, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Your birthday, like you can also type just like or you can choose from here. All right, like July and twelve. Okay. And place of birth, let's say Istanbul and keep going. So the first one, are you planning a mobility in your citizenship country? For students who has double nationality or double passport or another nationality, and if you are willing to do Erasmus in your second nationality country, if you choose the yes, so in that case, your application will be, I mean, your total score will be 10 point minus because of your second nationality country that you are doing Erasmus. If you don't have any second nationality or if you don't have any second passport, you will choose a no. Are you a vegetarian or matri or vegetarian relative student? Let's say no. Are you under state projection? This question, this clause actually, if you have kind of supporting from the government or if you are under the protection of the government, you can choose yes or no. Let's say no. Do you have additional grant requests for being economically disadvantaged? So I want to just point it off this point. This is important because for disadvantaged students, you have to choose this part. What does mean exactly? Let's make it clear. So this mean of the clause is if you get any support, I mean like uh, any budget from the government for supporting, if your economical situation is not good and if you are supporting by the Turkish government, you have to choose yes. If not, if you don't get any kind of support from the Turkish government, by the way, if you get it, you have to confirm and you have to provide related documents during the application. I'm going to say no. Any disability, special needs. So disability part, it must be maybe mental or physical disability. If you have kind of disability, you can choose yes or no. If you don't have, or if you have any special needs, like kind of maybe you have like a chronic disease, maybe you have to use some kind of medicine. If you have kind of problem, you can choose yes. So contact information, your personal email. As you know, I have said at the beginning of the application form, you have to log in with your Istanbul teacher.edu.tr email. This is your current email on the system. If you don't know your email, you can make it sure from the Blackboard system or you can make it sure from the student registration system. It's mostly your name dot and surname at Istanbul teacher.edu.tr. By the way, you can also add your personal email. Why we add personal email? Let's make it clear this part because Istanbul teacher at EduTR email, mostly students don't care about or they don't control this email. They mostly use personal emails. That's normal, it could be. You can also type here your personal email, like let's say Jawher Aslan at gmail.com or gmail, hotmail, any kind of uh, browser you can use it, okay? Your phone number, you can write your phone number over here. And then you will keep going, your postal address. This is important because we will use this uh, postal address also in your grant agreement. You have to write your postal address correctly because sometimes also partner university will send you some documents such as acceptance letter or many other documents could be. So you have to write your postal address correctly over here. Let's say I'm gonna write it like this. 
your full name. So emergency contact information person. So this part, uh, you can use who will be mostly dealing with your process in any urgent case. You may write your father, you may write your ma mother or your brother, your sister. That's up to you. Which one is close to you or which one will be able to contact with them. In any case, especially when you are abroad, also that university or partner university can contact also your father, your mother or your uh, siblings, let's say. Let's say I wrote uh, Ahmed and phone, blah, blah, and relationship, let's say, brother. You can also write the same information over here. So, Erasmus preference. So this part is important because you will be nominated according to the list of preference. So, the first part, have you ever participated in Erasmus program before? If you have participated and if you say yes, the system will ask you about which time and which date, which semester you have been attended. If you have not been attended before, you can say no. So, let's choose agreement which we have chosen at uh, business administration and then you will be able to see a list of the business administration which universities we have agreement. As you see over here, we have like many universities with business administration agreement. As you know, business administration is a common program, so mostly uh, European universities also has English business administration. So that's why we have actually a wide preference list for business administration students. So sometimes I also receive kind of questions like, uh, let's imagine there is a program we are calling in Turkish international trade, which is also a tijaret. There are some students, they call in that we, we cannot find many programs or many agreed universities about the international trade. So as you know, in abroad, each program has specific or different name in different universities. So for international trade students, you are able to choose also business administration. If you choose the business administration, you will take the common courses which is offered by business administration. Because in abroad, this program also calling international business. I mean like international trade is calling also international business. So let's choose like one university and then keep going to another one. And then I'm going to explain at the end of the choosing. So firstly, as you see over here, there is a mark which is red. This university, which is mean that you want to firstly be nominated to this university. This is your first preference. If you want to go this university like Belgium, you have to choose Belgium. If you want to go Germany, you have to choose that university in your first choice. And then you have to list also five more, let's say more, four universities. That's up to you. If you want, you can choose just only one university or you can choose two or three universities. That's up to you, which countries you are interested in or which universities you mostly like to be attended in Erasmus Plus program. That's up to you. So end of the application process and when you awarded to attend to the Erasmus Mobility, we will check your preference list. If you have chosen like Belgium as a first university, we will nominate you according to your score, like total score, how we create total score, end of the application, as you know, there will be English exam. After the English exam, we will calculate your final score. How we will calculate your final score? 50% of your GPA and 50% of your score, English score. And then we will combine them and there will be a lineup. According to the lineup of the students, 
you will be nominated according to preference list of universities you have listed in application form. Let's imagine you have chosen Belgium as the first university that you want to be nominated. And then, I hope something that is can international trade students make their application as a business administration is not. Yes, as I said, you can also do it as a business administration. You can choose it because in abroad, as I said, uh, international trade, this is it is a specific name. You cannot find directly the same names as in other universities like international trade. Because in abroad, in other universities, international trade is also calling as a international business. So that's why it's common courses with business administration or international business. Of course, you will be able to choose also international trade. If you choose the international trade, you will be able to see some kind of list of the universities which they are calling international trade. The same, actually. So you are able to also choose international business or international, let's say, business administration during the, your application for, I mean, for international trade students. Okay, let's keep going our application form. So as I said, after the list of the preference universities, you will pass this next step. So duration, preferred duration, this part is important, guys. As you know, we apply right now, and the most close time that you will be able to attend Erasmus, it will be next fall term. So, according to next year, you will be able to decide individually. That's up to you for how long you want to go. If you want to go for one academic year, which is mean two semester, you will be able to choose one academic year. If you just want to go for fall semester, then you will click fall semester. If you want to go for spring semester next year, you will choose spring semester. That's up to you. By the way, um, I would, would you like to point it off a significant point actually over here. So for, let's assume that you have applied as a full semester student, just only for one semester. During the, your study process, I mean your Erasmus Plus process when you are abroad, you are able to extend your study process. But there is an important part. You have to apply or you have to confirm your study duration also in your universities. Are they able to accept you for spring semester as well? When you talk with your partner university, if they also accept you for spring semester, you can combine your spring semester and you can extend your Erasmus duration as a one year. But before that, you have to also contact with us and we will evaluate your application because of the budget and because of the fair sharing the budget, you also give much more as possible uh, to other students because it must be fair and we have to share the budget for most the, uh, for other students as well. So that's why we will firstly evaluate your application. If you, our budget is available to cover your spring semester, we will also accept your application and we will uh, accept your ex extension request and we will inform you that you have accepted also to combine your fall semester with spring semester. That's also another chance. But the first point that you have to be uh, in, uh, take care, actually, that's the, that's the part you have to uh, first inform us in first one month when you arrive to the abroad. This part is important. If you decide to extend your Erasmus Plus process, you have to inform us in one month when you are in abroad, OK? So let's keep going. So this part, I accept to be placed out of my preference list. What does it mean exactly? So as I told you, you have been listing five universities over here. But as a first university, let's say Belgium, that you wanted to go to Belgium, but your score was not enough because there were other students also has 
chosen the same university and their score is upper than your score. So that's why the firstly, the, uh, we will give chance to two students and then we will check your score. We will check and your second preference list and then we will nominate you like as a second university, which is mean this I accept to be placed out of my preference list. Also, sometimes we open or we make new agreements with other universities. If we also offer any other, let's say, uh, if we make any new agreement with another universities, which is, has been not listed in your preference list, we will be able also to offer you. So uh, we can also nominate you to that university. That's also another option. Any questions so far? Okay. Uh, okay. End of the end of the uh, end of the seminar. I'm gonna also explain the additional grant request. Okay. So let's keep following the application form. So I said yes for this, and then proficiency language information. This part also is important. Language approval. So there is two options. I have a foreign language proficiency exam certificate and score. On the announcement, you will be able to see which kind of certificate, exam certificates will be accepted. What are they? Like TOEFL, IELTS, YÖKDİL, YDS. YÖKDİL and YDS, they are in the Turkish, that's carried out by Turkish government. That's also acceptable. If you have kind of exam result from those kind of certification programs, you can choose that I have certificate and score. If you don't have it, you can choose. I want to take the university Erasmus exam and use that score. You can choose this one. Let's assume that you don't have any result and we will choose this one. By the way, uh, you have also chance if you even have score, let's say uh, IELTS or TOEFL or any other English result, you are also able to take Erasmus proficiency exam. But end of the Erasmus proficiency exam, we will check your scores and your certificate score, which are is higher and we will use and we will keep consider that score, okay? But I want to point out one more thing over here. If you choose that you have an exam result or certificate, you have to upload your certificate to the system. I'm gonna explain you when we arrive to the forms. I'm gonna also inform you about that. Okay, so uh, for now, I'm gonna just choose the second option. Let's assume that you will take Erasmus exam, proficiency exam. So, it's the English, you will choose English. Okay. Let's keep following over here. So, this part is also important, application files. As you see over here, we have around by 20 forms. Mostly I receive kind of emails that we have to upload all these documents. No, you don't have to upload. As you see on the side of the documents, there is a required mark. You have to just upload required documents so far, which is transcript and second one is biometric size photo. Those are the first step of your application. So other forms or other files, it will be carry out step by step during the, your Erasmus mobility, okay? So for transcript of record, you have to request that from the student affairs. How you will do that? You will log in your student registration system, which is we call in OBS. And from the OBS, you can request that and they will be able to send you via email as a PDF. When you receive your transcript, then you can just choose 
from the computer and upload it. That's it. Also, it's same for biometric size photo. If you don't have biometric size photo, or uh, you can just take a picture of your biometric size photo and you can uh, reshape it according to the size of the biometric photo and you can upload to the system. Okay? So, if you couldn't upload required documents, you will be able to see a warrant over here. You cannot prefer the same university twice. Please check your preference list. See, this is another problem also. Each steps, if you make something wrong, the system will warn you about that. Okay, let's check which universities we have chosen twice. Like Shmalkada, let's choose another one. Uh, is also Bremen, let's choose here. Okay, Denmark, let's say, uh, France. Okay, here is some kind of words as well. Uh, I also received kind of uh, emails. When you choose some kind of universities, you will be able to see some kind of information related to that university. Because some kind of universities, especially the Baltic countries universities, they require TOEFL or IELTS score, especially. And some of them also require C1 level English. So if you don't have C1 level English or if you don't have TOEFL or IELTS certificate, you will not be able to be accepted by those universities. But according to the, our agreement, we have a special agreement with some of them. They also accept our Erasmus proficiency exam, which is B2 level. Of course, it depends on the universities and depends on the conditions and pros and cons of the universities in Baltic countries. Okay. Okay, I roll down. And you will see, I think there is also some things. All right. Okay, let's keep going. So before the completing, before the saving, actually, your application, you will be able to see some kind of information here pointed out. I hereby confirm that information given is correct and completed. You have to click and choose these related parts. Let's say I have completed and choose it by adding upload my transcript and biometric photos. When I say save my application, there will be also a warn about that. This correct the form errors. So you have to choose your transcript and upload to the system. Okay. Otherwise, you will not be able to complete your application. Over here, passport size photo, you can also browse, you can also upload over here your biometric photo. Uh, I'm gonna choose one of picture. I hope I can find. Uh, no. Mm. I don't have any specific photo in the computer. So let's choose one of documents just basic like uh, mm -hmm. okay let's check one of the former students it would be better okay so let's assume that I'm gonna just upload one of the transcripts for the system to complete it. Uh, okay, let's choose this. And let's choose like, I hope the system will accept this. Okay, but you don't, uh, have to do it just like me because I just added some basic uh, documents to the system for completing. 
Okay, so over here, I didn't complete it. Uh, let's see. Uh, JPEG, it's required JPEG, unfortunately. So, let's choose from the former incoming students. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's assume this one. Okay. All right. So let's say my application, as you see, when you completed all the required part, you will be able to save your application. So until now, your application is still not completed. You just save it. If there is something you have to update later, you are able to log in in any other time. I mean, during the application process, like between 8th of February and 26th of February. You are able to update or uh, upload required documents to the system. Here, when you complete your application, you will be able to see a warning about that. When you complete your application, you will not be able to edit or update your application form anymore. Are you sure? Please download your application form, sign it, and upload to the system. This is the third document that you have to complete. When you complete your application, let's say, okay, and then I complete it. You will be able to see here PDF. You have to click the PDF and you will be able to see also a warning about it again. Do not forget to make one copy of the PDF print of your application form and upload it to Erasmus port system with your transcript. I click it again. So your application is downloaded as you see over here. And then when you downloaded your application, you have to sign it and fill it out related part is over here. And then you will upload to the system. So how you will do that? I'm gonna also show you how you have to do that. So let's switch all this page. When you completed your application and when you downloaded your PDF of application, you have to come to the operations part over here. On the operations part, you will be able to see file sections on the left side. When you click the file section, there is checklist. As you see, you will be able also to see which kind of documents you have uploaded during the, your application process. Over here, you will be able to see checklist of the documents for all the Erasmus process. But as I said, at the beginning of the application, you have to just upload three documents. Those are first biometric size photo, one transcript of record, and the third one, your application form. Okay? So, if you choose the application form over the checklist, let's say, where is the application form? Erasmus application form, as you see over here. If I choose the name of the file from the checklist, and if you upload the related file after that, you will not be able to delete it or update it. But if you don't choose the name of the file from the checklist, or if you just type the name of the file as over here, like say application form, and then when you wrote it and when you browse from your computer, as you see, here is as different kind of protection. It's not protected, which is mean you can download or you can delete or you can update it. You can delete it and you can 
renew or you can re-upload the new one. Okay? So as you see, I can delete it right now. Then it's deleted. Okay? So as you see, this is how to you have to complete your application form. Is there any questions so far? All right. Okay. So if you have any specific question regarding to the application process, you can uh, raise your hand or you can type to the chat board. I'm going to answer them so we can pass on the next step, OK? So when I fail to the settle in the fifth, is the last option automatically plus the last remaining. So uh, you have five universities choosing. This is the maximum list or maximum uh, number of the universities. But of course, you will evaluate your preference list according to the lineup. Firstly, we will consider your first choice. If you are not able to nominate it for first choice, then we will consider second option. Let's say you are not still available for being nominated that second choice and then we will consider third part. Until the fifth preference list, we will consider that. As I said, out of the preference list, if we make any agreement with new universities, we will be able also to offer you those kind of options as well. Or if there is a problem regarding to the your universities, as you know, because during the COVID situation, uh, we will talk about the COVID situation, of course, for next step, just the basic information. During the pandemic situation, unfortunately, uh, we still carry out Erasmus as a conditional way. So that's up to partner universities, unfortunately. So that's why if the university inform us that they are not able to accept students because of the pandemic situation or because of the restriction has been taken by the government of the university, unfortunately, we will keep consider other universities out of the, your preference list. Okay. Yes, I'm going to talk also about the traineeship as well, yeah. Industrial design department has uh, advisor. I, you mean, uh, I think, program coordinator, Erasmus program coordinator, right? You can also check it on the Erasmus port system. You are able to see your coordinator also in the Erasmus port system. So, Mohammed Shape, so that's the whole process. After filling the online form, we need to download, sign, and upload the form in the system. Yes, exactly. After completed your application form, bef before the completing, you are not able to download the PDF. First, you have to complete your application, and then you will be able to download PDF. Please do not forget to complete your application if you couldn't complete or if you forget to complete your application form, we will not consider that you have applied for Erasmus. Unfortunately, your application will be not valid, okay? So there is a question by Iram. I accidentally uploaded my transcript file to the system twice. Is it a problem? It's not a problem. If you have uploaded a file twice or more than one, we will check the files. If they are same, we will delete one of them, OK? So I'm going to also answer the master student's uh, thesis stage. This uh, question is more detailed. I'm going to answer this question end of the seminar, OK? Because there are many important points that you have uh, that I have to mention actually. So, is there any question about the just application process? Is there any point that you didn't understand? Is there not point that you couldn't 
understand or is not clear. You don't need to use electronic sign for application form. So uh, application form, as you know, PDF has also signature option. It's kind of, uh, you can take your picture of your signature or you can just uh, sign it by pen on the PDF and you can save it. Or if you have a signature, you can take picture and then you can insert also, you can insert to the PDF. That's also another option for you. You don't have to go out in this pandemic situation to print it out and then to scan it, okay? Yeah, as you know, uh, most of you use uh, smartphones, so Google has Google Drive, so you can also use Google Drive and you can scan via Google Drive. You can upload it to the system as well. That's also another option. So when will the English exam be? The English exam will be uh, second week of the March. I'm going to also mention about that, okay? So any question related to the application process? Yeah, exactly. Here I am. Yeah. Yes, the exam will be online. Uh, as I said, I'm going to mention about the details of the exam and of the seminar on the last 30 minutes. Okay. I think there is no question related to the application process. Okay. Let's pass on next topic. Uh, what is Erasmus Mobility exactly, actually? Let's mention a little bit about that because I want to, actually, the seminar will be a kind of chat atmosphere. We will talk about the, what is exactly Erasmus Studies Mobility. So as you know, uh, during the pandemic situation, let's also talk about little pandemic situation and how affected to the Erasmus Mobilities. And then uh, I'm gonna give you also some kind of details all the process, okay? So as you know, uh, during the pandemic situation, unfortunately, we have faced with many problems at the beginning of the pandemic, and many students' mobility has been, uh, actually, let's say, um, they have give up or they just backed to the country. But in that case, even we extended duration of the projects and we gave also second chance to the uh, students for doing Erasmus program. Yes, I'm going to also mention about the equivalence of the course and of the seminar, okay? So, guys, if you want, you can ask your questions. As I said, on the last 30 minutes, it will be better. Okay, I'm going to answer all the questions. So because if you interrupt me, uh, because we have limited time, I'm not going to be able to mention about all the process because there are many students who want to get some details about Erasmus, okay? So anyway, let's keep going. Uh, as I said, during the pandemic situation, unfortunately, uh, all the Erasmus Plus mobility is affected. Because uh, we didn't know what kind of virus we are facing, actually. So because of the virus, uh, many universities, many countries has different kind of restriction or they canceled mobilities. Also, our students canceled their mobilities during the process. But in that process, we made as much as possible everything for students. And we made most of the restricted rules flexible for students. We provide many chance and we covered many uh, expenses of the students which uh, standard in abroad or they couldn't get it back. Just like uh, imagine uh, students sometimes pay deposit during the flat or during the staying in the abroad 
and uh, they couldn't get their deposits. So in that case, also we pay that part. Even we covered uh, during the pandemic situation their ticket. I mean, plane ticket. Also, we gave chance uh, to make their Erasmus Plus mobility or they can extend it for next semester or next year, even they have chance. If any of you awarded to attend Erasmus for next year and because of the pandemic situation or because of the other restriction, if you are not able to travel to abroad or if there will be any problem due to the coronavirus, we will also use or provide same opportunities for you as well. If you cancel your mobility, if you decide to cancel because of the coronavirus, we will give you chance and you can do it next year without applying and without taking English exam. That's also an opportunity for you. Okay. As you know, uh, during the COVID process, uh, unfortunately, we couldn't also keep contact with many universities because uh, before the pandemic situation, we were planning to travel uh, to visit European universities about the bilateral contracts because as you know, the bilateral contracts were going to end up end of the 2021. But uh, European Commission uh, decided to extend it automatically one year. Uh, thanks to the European Commission, so currently we have all the agreements are still valid for one year. Uh, as I said, you will not get Erasmus application from anywhere. You have to download PDF, okay? when you completed your application. All right, let's keep going. Okay, if you uh, if you miss it, so we can talk about that end of the uh, seminar, okay? That will be great because if you interrupt me each question, I will not be able to mention about all the Erasmus topics that I have to today, okay? End of the 30, 30 minutes, you can ask all questions. All right, so about the bilateral contracts, as I said, uh, our bilateral contracts were going to end up end of the 21, but uh, currently one year automatically extended and we have currently 24 uh, countries and in totally 76 universities with 76 universities agreement. But at the beginning of the this year, I mean 2021, a uh, European Commission passed on a new term of the Erasmus, which is called in 2021 and 2027. So this term will be a different term because uh, everything will be digital. We will not struggle anymore with paperwork. You will also not struggle with paperwork. You will do everything in your mobile phone, ac actually. So you will be able to download applications and everything will be in the digital form. So you will be able to create your learning agreement in digital. You will follow all the process of the Erasmus and Erasmus app. By the way, uh, a few weeks ago, because uh, as I know, I have I have also announced that you may also attend the Erasmus app application a meeting. Uh, European Commission just mentioned about the Erasmus app. You can also download Erasmus app to your phones, and you can also check countries and other uh, chances or advantages of the Erasmus modalities which you are wondering about all the process. You are also able to communicate with other Erasmus students in the application. Uh, that's the big chance for you. So uh, as a Istanbul Commerce University we also integrated to the system, digital system I mean. Uh, we use around the three digital system which one that you have seen a few couple of minutes, uh, which is application system, Erasmus port. And second one, we, we call it dashboard. Dashboard is kind of the digital platform for the Erasmus mobility. And uh, right now, um, not all the universities, but uh, most of universities integrated to the dashboard system. 
and you are able to log in dashboard and you are able to create your learning agreements in the dashboard system by the way and for Erasmus app that's the second digital platform that will be able to use you can also download Erasmus app to your phone and uh, at least take a look how it is and how it is efficient for you and at least get some basic information about the Erasmus app. So now for the next year, for I mean for the bilateral contracts, as, as I received many questions because some programs are uh, don't have enough options or has limited options for the partners, universities in abroad. Due to the limited options, unfortunately, um, we are not able to send sometimes many students or let's say like psychology or industrial. Uh, there are a few uh, programs just like that. We will also keep consider about the uh, establish a new actually bilateral contacts for 2021 and 2027 we are already in keep contact with many european universities we receive and we also take into consideration all the feedback of the students and we are searching for new programs and new universities how we can make it more efficient and how we can provide more options for students so just right now we are expecting the current application forms and current bilateral agreements uh, that has to be published by the european commission because all the european universities all the countries right now they are expecting the current guide and current application and the uh, bilateral contracts that has to be published by the European government. So unfortunately, we are not able right now to make any bilateral contract with any other European universities because of the process, uh, because the, all the forms has to be updated and all the universities are expecting the new uh, bilateral agreements. After bilateral agreements has been published by the European Commission, we will be able to keep contact or to update our current bilateral contracts or to create or to establish new bilateral agreements with new universities, of course. So as I uh, guess, it will be published in two or three months later. So we will be able to at least keep contacting our partners or new universities about the specific program, as I mentioned just uh, a few minutes ago, like psychology or industrial engineering or other programs, etc. So uh, we are already working on about uh, new agreements with new universities. So we are in contact with them, how we can make new agreements for new programs how we can provide more than uh, one or two options for students uh, as i uh, i can say around by end of 2021 uh, all the bilateral contracts will be updated and we will also add new bilateral agreements to the system and during your erasmus process as i said if we establish any new agreement with any other universities for specific programs, we will also be able to offer you that chance. You will be able also to nominate to those universities. That's out of your preferences, as I said. If we add a new agreements for a specific programs or any programs, we will also offer those kind of universities as a second chance for all the students. Okay, so I'm gonna share you one more part and we will talk about all the process of the Erasmus Mobility. Okay. I think you all see my screen right okay 
All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mention step by step Erasmus Studies Mobility. By the way, for the Turkish students, this is also a Turkish. If you want, you can take a picture that will be an efficient chart for you. If you are awarded to attend Erasmus Mobility, you can follow all those kind of steps, which is five steps of the Erasmus Studies Mobility. So let's get started with first step. So on the first step, as I mentioned, firstly, you have to apply online and you have to complete your online application and then you have to complete all the required documents for the application process. You have to upload to the system and then we will carry out English exam. This is the first step of the Erasmus process. As a second process is over here, after the English exam, you will take English exam as a two step, two section actually. So the English exam as we are planning, it will be probably online. It will be two section. The first section is the writing part. Second section will be speaking section. So between speaking section and writing section, there will be two or three days as we planned. So for the writing exam, Firstly, when you take the writing exam, you have to get 65 score out of 100 for attending to the speaking exam. If you couldn't get 65 score or above, you will be not able to attend speaking exam, unfortunately. So that's why as a first English exam, you have to take 65 score from the writing exam and then you will be able to attend speaking exam so and then after english exam completed we will make lineup we will calculate your score according to your gpa and according to your result of english exam so as i said 50 percent of your general gpa and 50 percent of your total english score will be combined after combine it, you will have final score. So when you have final score, there will be a lineup of the students. According to the programs and according to the preference lists or universities that you have chosen, you will be nominated. Okay, so let's pass on the third step. So in the third step, what we will do? After you have awarded to attend the Erasmus Mobility, we will start your nomination to partner universities. During the nomination process, you will be in contact all the process with us also. You will be cc'd all the emails. You will be informed about the, all the process. Because when we inform the university, when we uh, nominate you to the university, you have to keep following some process. What you have to do? Firstly, you have to complete some kind of documents as a first step. What those are? The first one, approval form. Second one, before the mobility, which is learning agreement part. What is approval form and learning agreement? Let's make it clear. Approval form, which is the course choosing. You have to choose your course in here. And you have to fill out those forms, and those forms has to be signed by both universities, from partner universities and from Istanbul Commerce University. During your Erasmus Plus process, you don't have to choose, and you will not choose any course in the Istanbul Commerce University. You will not use student registration system to choose in course. You will choose your courses via learning agreement and creating your approval form when you create your approval form and when you create your learning agreement it's mean that you have chosen your courses well how we will do that firstly when nominated student has been completed you will check the offered courses by the partner universities according to your programs you will check your courses, which kind of courses offered by 
Partner University and which kind of courses will be offered for next semester in your university. And you have to choose most appropriate courses to match each other. How we will do that? We will do that together. We will do that with your Erasmus departmental coordinator. After filling out forms, by the way, you are able to also see how to fill out learning agreement, how to fill out approval form on the Erasmus port system or Erasmus port website. You can check it and you can download the PDF of how to fill in out learning agreement, how to fill in out approval form. You can check all the information during that process. By the way, uh, we will already organize an orientation program for awarded students. And of the, all the process, we will make orientation program. I'm going to also mention about all the process and in that orientation program as well. So when you completed your learning agreement and approval form, you will send to your university and your university will sign it and send us. And you will upload to the system, Erasmus Port system. As you see on the application form, there were some kind of documents. Those are documents which has to be or have to be completed during the Erasmus process. Learning agreement, which is one of them. Approval form, which is one of them. Just like mentioned on the application form. So when you completed all those steps, you will receive application that confirmed by the university and they will send you an acceptance letter. When you confirm, when you receive your acceptance letter, then we will start your visa procedure. How we'll do that? Firstly, when you receive your acceptance letter, you have to inform us and we will also write a visa letter for you for the visa process. And you have to gather all the required documents for the visa process. Then you will be able to complete your visa process and you will be able to apply and your visa process. On the third step, when you got your visa, then we will sign a grant agreement with you. After the grant agreement, uh, you will receive your fund in first installment, which is the first installment 80% of your total fund. Let's assume that you are going to attend uh, Erasmus, one of the countries Germany, let's say. By the way, Erasmus funds has been categorized according to the countries and according to the uh, economical conditions of the countries. So normally, a few years ago, there were three groups for countries, like first group and second group and third group countries. Right now, one, uh, the first group and second group countries are combined. So the fund, I mean, per month is same for second and first countries. For third part countries, the budget is different. For first and second part countries, the budget per, per month is 500 euro. For third part countries, is 300 euro. According to the duration of your Erasmus, this fund will be calculated and you will receive 80% of this total amount as a first installment, okay? After that, there is the fourth step. What we will do on the first step? On the first step that you will arrive your university, after the arriving, you will uh, sign your arrival document and you will uh, upload to the system. During the uh, Erasmus process, I mean, uh, Erasmus program is three steps at the beginning. I mean, studies process before the mobility, after the mobility, and during the mobility. So the third step, which is mean also during the mobility, what you will do during the mobility? On the first, before the going to Erasmus, as you remember, you have filled out a learning agreement approval form. When you arrive to the university, there might be some courses closed or maybe not offered because of the COVID situation, maybe because of the teacher or because of other problems. 
So in that case, as you know, we have also a drop peak in our university. Also, partner universities has a drop peak. You will be able to update your learning agreement during that process. If there is any course clauses or if not offered by the university, you will be able to drop that course and you will be able to take another course or replace that course with another course. And then you will update also your learning agreement and your approval form and all the signature must be completed and you have to upload to the system. As I told you during the application process, uh, in the, during the mobility, you have chance to extend your mobility as I told you before. But during the mobility, you have to do this in the first month. If you don't do that in the first month, you will not be able to extend your Erasmus process, process or to combine spring semester, okay? All right, on the fifth step, this is the last step of the Erasmus process. After completed Erasmus studies process, you will get your transcript from the partner university and you have to fill out learn uh, after the mobility learn agreement you will get your transcripts you will upload to the system your passport copy and you will get your confirmation of the stay from the university and you have to upload all those documents to the erasmus port system we do not accept any document via email do not forget this okay for the all the process you have to upload all the documents to the Erasmus port system, okay? After the, uh, completing your Erasmus process, you will receive OLS exam. Uh, before the mobility, you will also receive one OLS exam. The OLS exam in total is two exam. The first one will be at the beginning of the mobility. The second one will, will be at the end of the uh, Erasmus stu uh, study process. Okay, when you completed all the process, you will fill out your OLS English exam. This OLS English exam is totally an exceptional English exam. What is exactly what we are proposing to that? The purpose of this OLS exam to just evaluate your Erasmus study process, how contributed to your English level or how contributed to in, in, any other uh, foreign language, okay? And of the Erasmus mobility, you will also receive EU survey. And EU survey is an important part of the Erasmus mobility. You have to complete it and you have to fill it out. After fill it out, you have to download the PDF and you will upload to the Erasmus port system as done for other documents. After that, you will complete your proof of recognition process. What is proof of recognition process? When you received your transcript from the partner university, we will take a look your transcript and we will take a look your first approval form. And then if there is any change, we will update it and we will fill out your final proof of recognition form. And we will do it together with your Erasmus departmental coordinator. Also, you can find how to fill it out proof of recognition form in the Erasmus office website. I'm gonna mention also about uh, during the orientation pro process about all these kind of documents as well. When your proof of recognition completed or when you completed your EU survey, you will receive rest of your fund, which is 20% of amount. Okay, that's the last part of the Erasmus process. So is there any question regarding to the Erasmus process steps? Just regarding to the Erasmus plus process. All right. I'm going to also talk about that uh, on the last 30 minutes. Let's just mention about the traineeship application and then I'm going to answer your questions on the last 30 minutes, okay? So, 
I'm gonna also uh, do it in English. I will share also the English version, okay? I just prepared that today. I'm gonna also translate to the English and upload to the Erasmus Office website. You will be able to download it, okay? All right. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, Mehmet, I'm going to also mention about that, okay? So, let's talk a little bit about the um, traineeship application. So, traineeship application, it will be open uh, in 1st of March, by the way. I'm also preparing uh, its announcement. I'm going to publish it uh, in first of the first week of the March, yeah, as planned. So, the process, I mean, application process is totally the same with Erasmus Studies. You will also be able to apply in online. You will also upload your required documents to the system. And then there will be also English exam as will be in Erasmus Studies Mobility. By the way, if you attended Erasmus Studies Mobility English exam, you are not have to attend also Erasmus Traineeship Mobility English exam. You are able to use that result for that mobility as well, okay? That's also another chance for you. But if you don't want to use that result, if you want to take English exam again, of course, you can take it. And if you get maybe a higher score, you can use that score as well. For traineeship mobility, you are able to do your traineeship in all program countries, guys. You are not limited with any program countries or with any companies. By the way, you have to choose or you have to find your company in abroad. Erasmus Traineeship Mobility is a flexible mobility. That's up to you. You have to find your place and you have to find which country or uh, which, univers which university or which company you are interested in. You have to apply and you have to get acceptance letter. When you got your acceptance letter, then we will start with the process and other agreement process, okay? The process, as I said, with studies, it's totally the same. There is only a few basic topics. The found is different for, uh, for first and second group countries. Your amount, uh, I mean your per month, you will receive 600 euro. For third group countries, you will receive 400 euro, okay? So the traineeship mobility, it must be at least two months, okay? Two months, but depends on you, by the way. As you know, for each cycle, I mean like bachelor, master, and PhD, the Erasmus duration is maximum 12 months. If you make six months, Erasmus studies, then it means there is left six months for doing one more Erasmus. That's up to you. If you want, you can apply as a second time for studies or you can apply for traineeship. But when you apply second times for Erasmus, there will be 10 point minus from your final score. Do not forget this, okay? Each mobility has been carried out before, which is mean 10 point minus. Why 10 point minus? Because we have to give chance also other students. This kind of mobilities must be fair for all students. So that's why for giving chance more than other students who are not attended before, so we doing this just for giving extra chance, extra advantage for new Erasmus students, of course. But, but uh, that's up to you, of course, if you get higher score from the English exam or if your GPA is higher than other students, maybe your score will be as much as same. That's up to you, of course. All right. Any question relating to the traineeship?
No, we cut it from total final score, which is 50% of your GPA and which is 50% of your English exam. All right. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, we are almost end of the seminar, uh, last 30 minutes, I'm gonna answer your questions by one by. Let's get started with some questions. Okay. So Aznur says, I couldn't understand how to could sign the application form without getting the print. So uh, for the application form, as I said, you can download your computer and when you open up PDF, there will be a choice, sign it. When you click that, you can sign it via pen or you can insert your signature. If you take, or uh, let's say, just uh, sign a basic uh, white paper and take picture, okay, and uh, scan it, after that, you can reschedule that or resize that, and then you can also insert to the PDF, okay? There is two options for signature of the application, okay? All right, let's see. So, can we give up after the placement to result? Yes, you have kind of right. But you have to keep consider when you awarded to Erasmus to attend to the Erasmus. If you plan to give up, you have to do it in one month after final score, final list has been published. If you couldn't do that, my, uh, unfortunately, next year we will also cut minus 10 points, okay? And John Seller, I'm a double major student. I am graduating from the main department. Is there any problem when I do Erasmus? So for double major students, that's up to you which program or uh, which program is more available for you or which program you are most mostly interested in. You can choose that program and you can apply with that program, of course. But during the double degree, uh, double major students, when you do Erasmus, you have to do it only in one program. You will not be able to get any course from other the programs. You have to postpone it or you have to freeze that program until back, come back to the Erasmus. Özünür Tekiner, sorry, but I couldn't understand how to, okay, I think I explained already, Taha. Taha John Cherry, last year exam point is not available for this year's application, right? So we have to take the exam again. So uh, Taha, if you have been awarded to attend Erasmus last year, and if you couldn't attend due to the coronavirus, your Erasmus English exam is still valid. But if there is not kind of application or if there is not kind of process, Unfortunately, English exam is valid only for one year. You have to take the English exam again. Uh, is the cut of I think also I mentioned about that. Do I have to get internship acceptance letter myself? For internship acceptance letter, as I said, guys, that's up to you. Uh, you have to find your traineeship place. You have to apply and you have to receive your acceptance letter. If you couldn't receive or if you couldn't get your acceptance letter for traineeship from the company, you will not be able to complete or you will not be able to start a visa process and you will not be able to sign grant agreement with us, okay? Mohammed Shaib, how can find the company for traineeship? So during the traineeship application, uh, I will also share some kind of links uh, related pages about the how to find uh, traineeship opportunities. So you can check kind of websites. There are many offers, traineeship offers, I mean. You can apply those kind of offers. Uh, if you couldn't find, of course, any place, 
you can also keep contact with us. I'm gonna also do it as much as I can do, of course, for you. Mehmet Said Toprak, if we report here with the first mount, will there be no section? No, if you do it in one mount, in the first mount, there is no problem, okay? Is there one exam in here? Because some universities, uh, some universities have two exams which are in March and September. We have also two exams, as it, which is for uh, one of them for the Erasmus studies, one of them for traineeship. In any case, normally that's up to universities. Some universities maybe they can do twice English exam or they can open uh, Erasmus application twice. That's up to them. But we open it once in one year and you decided which semester and which term you want to go. You apply and you choose during the application process. Uh, okay. Elgan Demirtas, I'm the first year student. Can I apply? Yes, you can apply, Elgan. Uh, the most important part, uh, you have to provide a transcript, which is already has been issued if you are the first year. So your first term transcript has been already issued, so you are able to apply, okay? So just uh, keep consider that your GPA must be 2.50 if you are bachelor degree, okay? Mohammed Shaib, can we use IELTS certificate in place of the English exam? Yes, you can use it as I mentioned. Uh, IELTS certificate is one of the acceptable certificate uh, English result, which is, has been also published and has been also written in, in the announcement. And, uh, we can go with the department we, we want, right? It doesn't have to be the main department. So uh, this that's up to you guys. It's, I mean, which program you are studying? Uh, do you mean for the traineeship, I think? Uh, right, Ada? I think it's related to the traineeship. So for the traineeship, that's up to you, as I said. Uh, for the traineeship opportunities, you don't have kind of compulsory or obligatory to do a traineeship which is related to your program or your department. You can do it in different kind of field, but if you want to, your traineeship, Erasmus traineeship can be also accepted as a compulsory traineeship during the last year of your bachelor. You have to keep contact with your a dean and they have to confirm it that your company is related to your program okay can you give info about the exam so uh, english exam as i said it will be it will be two section the first section it, which is writing the second one which is speaking as i said before for the writing exam you have to get 65 score out of 100 for attending speaking exam. If you couldn't get 65 score and above, you will not be able to take speaking exam, okay? During the writing exam, there will be also different sections like multiple choice, reading part, and essay part as well, okay? Özge, if we want to go to the internship, we are making the deal with the workplace. Yes. Uh, you have to talk all the conditions with your company, Özge. Uh, depends on the companies. They may offer like two months, six months, or three months, or one year. You have to make it all the process with companies. After when you ac receive your acceptance letter, our responsibility will start, okay? Did you mention subject or the additional grant request? For additional grant requests, as I said, uh, there are kind of clauses. Uh, if you have, if you are an, a disadvantaged student, you will be able to receive extra grant. Uh, 
uh, or if you get any support from the government and if you prove that of course you will be able also to, to get additional grant but uh, if you are not one of the conditions of the students you will not be able unfortunately can you give information about the process exam i think i already did UK is not with the options for the traineeship anymore. Yes, uh, by the way, Taha, uh, unfortunately, UK is not one of the Erasmus program countries anymore. So it means you cannot do Erasmus traineeship and Erasmus mobility in UK, in the UK, unfortunately. But we are working also about the UK because the UK will uh, keep starting a new program which is will be supported by the uh, UK government which is called in Turing program so UK will pass on Turing program they will uh, uh, spend around 100,000 pounds for that program we will also keep uh, talking with kind some universities from the UK maybe we will also make some kind of agreements from UK as well for the Turing program. That's also valid for Swiss, I mean Switzerland. Switzerland is also not one of the program countries. They have also individual, I mean, own programs. It's called in Swiss European Mobility. We will also keep consider Swiss European Mobility as well. Okay, master students in the thesis stage, can they apply for student mobility? Okay, this question is important. Uh, I have to make it clear. For master students who will arrive or who will be in the thesis stage, yes, you can apply in the thesis stage, but you have to keep consider some part. Those are very important because during the thesis process for master students, you are not able to take your thesis and you will not be able to defense your thesis. If you do Erasmus Mobility, you will take extra exceptional courses, okay? Additional courses, I mean. If you completed all the courses, you have to get at least 20 ECTS from Istanbul Commerce University and from Partner University as well. You are not able to take thesis instead of courses or to match thesis with courses from abroad, okay? By the way, do not forget during the thesis process, if you do Erasmus, please keep consider that your study process may be longer than official duration, which is four semesters, okay? Because when you back, when you come back to the Erasmus, you will be able to take your thesis and defense it. IRAM is a body system available in our university. Uh, IRAM, unfortunately, body system is not available, but we are work on about that. Um, maybe we can also uh, consider about it. We, we can organize it because uh, newcomer Erasmus students also need kind of uh, support, actually. Maybe we can organize kind of event and we can choose the uh, participants. Okay, be sure actually do need to know Italian to go to the Italy. Is only English enough? Uh, of course, if you know Italian, that will be a plus for you. But of course, you don't have to know Italian to go Italy because Erasmus uh, courses is a reused common language, which is English. You will take English courses. But of course, if you know, if you speak Italian, you can take also Italian language courses, which is offered, okay? It's also same for other countries like Spain or Germany, okay? What documents are required to apply for internship? Uh, those kind of documents, it's same for the traineeship. You will be able to see when traineeship uh, applications open. It's same, you have to upload again your transcripts, your biometric photo, and your application form, okay? Uh, is the certain English exam date? It's not, uh, it's not certain yet, but we are planning to do it 
around second week of March. After the applications has been completed, uh, I'm going to also publish the final list of the participant and the date of the English exams. Okay. Can contracted schools change in the future? Yes, as I mentioned, John said, uh, contracts, I mean bilateral agreements, uh, will be changed, of course, uh, because I'm planning to make more efficient agreements for programs. As I check it on the system, unfortunately, there are many kind of programs which they are not efficient or they are weighing actually. So I would like to update and create more efficient agreements with new universities. Okay. But of course, there will be many, uh, most of universities will be the same, but we will also add new universities as well, of course. All right. Betul, once the mobility agreement completed with the Swiss government, can we go there for the internship too? So uh, for the internship, unfortunately, Swiss uh, is not part of the Erasmus, as I said. Swiss program is only for studies. There is no traineeship. If you find traineeship in Swiss, Switzerland, of course, uh, you will not be able to get found from us. You can go, but you will not be able to get because Switzerland is not part of the Erasmus traineeship country. Okay, thank you. Let's check. Can we watch this record again in YouTube or something? Yes, uh, seminar is already recording. Uh, I'm gonna share also in YouTube. Uh, in the YouTube, uh, you can find also Turkish version of this seminar actually. Uh, but I'm going to also publish uh, this seminar as well, okay? Uh, should we connect with the school email? I forgot my passport. If you forgot your passport, you have to contact to the uh, uh, D-Block. There is a D-Block, which is a student information service. You have to keep contact with them. They will uh, update your password, okay? All right. Does the internship have to be, uh, has to be related to bachelor program? As I said, uh, traineeship opportunities, that's up to you. You can do it in different field of your program, of course. Uh, but if you want to replace Erasmus traineeship or internship with your compulsory traineeship in the faculty, you have to do it your traineeship or internship in a company which is related to your program, okay? And you have to take confirmation from the faculty. All right, Mehmet said Toprak, if a problem occurs for any reason, do we have a chance to transfer the university and country to next year? As I said, due to the coronavirus or any uh, force major situation, you can uh, put off your Erasmus mobility or you can put, postpone it uh, for the next term, okay? If we have less than 30 ECTS left in our degree, how can we apply in that case? So in that case, as you know, uh, Turkish Higher Education Council gives permission to take more than 240 ECTS. So if you have less than 30 ECTS, you can take extra courses to combine it to complete to the 30 ECTS, okay? That's also another option for you. But it must not be less than 20 ECTS for a valid Erasmus mobility, okay? All right. Mm. Uh, there are many questions. I think I missed some ones. If I missed any questions, please, Right again, I'm gonna answer, okay. 
If I have one semester left, can I apply for internship? I mean, go to the internship when I am a graduate. So uh, this part is also important. This question is a good question. The internship opportunity, I'm going to suggest you to do it on the last year, guys, because traineeship opportunity, when you apply the traineeship opportunity, you have also a chance to do it after the graduation. When you graduate from the school, from the university, you will have 12 months to do your traineeship, okay? All right. Sevim Veripashoğlu, I am currently a second year student in international trade. When I apply, I will choose the third term, right? No, you will, you will choose uh, first year because there is one year completed then you will choose the first year okay thanks my department is psychology and i don't have any option just czech republic can this change later should i take the risk of going iram uh, unfortunately this uh, psychology is one of the program that we are looking to make new agreements and uh, provide new options for you. Uh, of course, we are planning, we are working about uh, new agreements. If any agreements has been added during the process, during the, your Erasmus process, we will also offer that option. But if you have to, I mean, depends on your study process, I don't know which class you are right now, but if you have time, of course, you can apply again next year. Okay. How can we contact with you if we have any question? So you can write email whenever you wish to the Erasmus at tjaret.tr, okay? Okay, this is the official email. If you have any question, you can write Erasmus at tjaret.edu.tr. I'm gonna answer all the questions. Uh, what should I choose as I am graduate from the prep school and I am on the first year. So, you cannot choose uh, but uh, you will be able to complete it because when you were attended to the Erasmus, uh, already one year will be completed. So that's why you can choose first year, okay? Because uh, right now you are applying, but the closest time that you will be attending Erasmus, it's next semester. So in that case, so I mean for first semester students, you will be able already to complete it one year. So, any questions? Do you have any questions? If I missed any question or if I didn't reply any questions, please write again. I'm gonna answer as well. No, you don't consider prep school year because it's not belong to the bachelor degree cycle. Uh, if I get an acceptance letter from an internship from a company in outside of the application times, can I apply with the same letter next year or is there an exception in this case? So when you awarded for traineeship, so before the traineeship application, of course, you can keep looking to find traineeship opportunity as well. If you find traineeship opportunity and if you get acceptance letter before applying traineeship, I'm going to give you 10 point plus. Okay. But of course, when you award it, you will have 12 months to find a place and attend traineeship. Any question? I think we do not have 
any question more so thank you for joining when we go to the Erasmus for first time can we change it so as I said if you go to uh, I mean if you choose one term in the application if you want to change the semester or if you want to um, extend your study process uh, let's assume if you want to change your semester you have to do it after final list has been published in one month but if you want to extend your Erasmus duration when you attend when you go to the abroad you have to apply in one month again So yeah, you can apply without any acceptance letter for traineeship. As I said, if you have or if you got any acceptance letter from any institution, then I'm gonna give you 10 plus points. All right. How possible is to get another semester? What do you mean exactly with another semester? To change it? I couldn't understand your question exactly. So as I said, if you want to make it longer, your Erasmus uh, process, you have to apply when you were in abroad, in one month, when you arrived there, okay? If you want to extend, you have to apply for extension in one month when you arrive to the university in abroad. So, any question? So I think time is already up. We are almost came end of the seminar. If there is no question, I'm gonna switch out the record. Thank you for attending. I hope you have been informed for the, all the process. As I said, I'm gonna share the record and the related documents on the Erasmus website. You can download and you can also check it from Erasmus website, okay? Thank you, all of you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye, guys.